In esports, we tend to undervalue endurance. In physical sports, endurance is obviously key. In basketball, the best players are expected to spend 40 minutes plus on the court during each basketball game. In soccer, you need to spend even longer in the field. Trust me, I know, 14 years. And then there are sports that specifically target endurance, like long distance running. Compared to physical sports, Smash and other esports don't seem to be as much of a endurance type of game. But this is Keitaro, and if you've been watching our videos, you'll know just how much endurance you'll need to be able to deal with how much this game can affect your mentality. You also probably know that ProGuides.com is a great place to learn about everything in game. But hey, it can't hurt to say it again, right? If you've got a moment, head over to ProGuides.com and check out our InstaPro platform that has live coaching and our videos from top professionals. Before we get to the rest of the video, I want to ask you a question. Do you start to get worse at the end of a long grind session? How long does it take for your endurance to run out? Go ahead and answer in the comments below and continue the video. At Frostbite 2020, MKLeo got knocked into the loser's bracket by a teenage Mario main named Prodigy. Man, that tag's a little on the nose, huh? Anyways, since MKLeo got knocked right at the start of Top 96, he ended up having to play 11 more sets to win the tournament. Despite 3 0 several of his opponents, he still played 41 total games. If we average each game out to 4 minutes, Leo played 164 minutes of high level Smash. Your champion, MK Leo! If you haven't been to a tournament, playing under 3 hours of top level Smash might not seem that much of a big deal to you. If you have, you might be more aware of the toll that Smash can take. While Ultimate isn't too grueling on the hands, it's pretty tough on the mind. At the highest level of play, with elimination on the line, you have to be putting in a lot of effort. Unlike in a casual game, or even a friendly, maintaining that level of effort in a mentally taxing activity is pretty tough. Especially because the mental difficulty isn't just execution and quick thinking, it's also decision making. In the moment, it probably doesn't feel like it, but a lot of Smash is won by making better decisions than your opponent. For example, Getting a kill off a ledge trap often requires correctly deciding which defensive option to cover. Getting an opening in neutral often takes several decisions. It may take poking at your opponents with safe aerials until you catch a pattern or a slip up that you can punish. And weirdly enough, all those decisions wear out our minds. This is what experts call decision fatigue. It's making so many decisions that your brain gets tired, much like a muscle would. In the world of running, endurance is all physical. In Smash Bros. Ultimate, Endurance is still partly physical, but even more mental. To break it down, the brain can only take on so many decisions before it begins to run out of glucose. As a brain chemical, glucose is vital for regulating self-control. And believe it or not, your brain is holding you back from making that super hard, way too risky read you want to make. When your brain loses that sense of self-control, you play more risky, and in the dumb way, not the smart way, not the top player way. Recent studies have also found that worse glucose control leads to weaker working memory. If you watched our video on pressure, you might remember that working memory is the part of your brain that works quickly assessing the situation and making those important snap decisions. It's the stuff right at the forefront of your brain, and your brain's capacity to sort all of it. Basically, the longer you play, the longer the day, the more decisions you make, and the more fatigued your brain gets. All that fatigue leads to worse decisions and overall worse play. Because he is one we go. string away! Oh my goodness, that is your life! Now that we know how important endurance can be, we've got to learn what we can do to build and maintain it. One of the biggest steps to building endurance is doing less, not more. In this case, we mean making less decisions before and during the tournament. At first, the idea of cutting down decisions might seem strange. We can't always cut down the total number of decisions we have to make. However, we could change when we make those decisions and free up that processing space in our brain. By making a lot of decisions prior to the tournament, you can actually reduce your mental fatigue and increase your endurance even before you get into bracket. For example, if you're going to a local, you can pick what you're going to wear, what you're going to eat, and figure out how you're going to get there beforehand. That's three decisions that your brain doesn't have to think about the day of. If you're going to a major, you could do a ton more prep because they last the whole weekend. In that case, it's good to get your lodgings, your meals, and even your outfits for the weekend sorted ahead of time. All this might honestly sound a little crazy to you. Crazy as it sounds, reducing decisions is something that a lot of people do, including former President Barack Obama. 
But you don't have to become a cartoon character to cut down decision fatigue. In fact, stuff like planning your outfit ahead of time is just a short-term solution. One of the best long-term solutions for decision fatigue are habits. If you watched our video on habits, you might remember they're kind of like a mental shortcut. Our lizard brains use habits as a way to think less hard, less often. If you create certain habits and structures around what you do at tournaments, you can save valuable mental space. If you create strong life habits, like having a consistent diet, exercise, and sleep schedule, you can open up a ton of mental space. This is often why all kinds of athletes have lucky meals or rituals. They're functionally just habits built around the competition. It might even be part of why five-time MVP player Bill Russell always vomited before big matches. He even did worse if he didn't vomit. I guess, if he didn't vomit, he was thinking about whether he should vomit or not. Man, the human body is weird. Anyways, we don't recommend you vomit before a big set. Even Bill Russell isn't going to recommend it. But we do recommend that you get a good sleep and you build good lifestyle habits around competing. Sleep and diet can both be a big impact on how well you do and how much more mental endurance you have. One sleep case study found not sleeping for 17 to 19 hours had a worse effect on reaction time than drinking. Lack of sleep also increases the production of stress hormones like cortisol and decreases production of pleasure and reward hormones like dopamine. So you're not just having a good time. And top Smash competitors do take sleep seriously. At Smash Summit 9, it was a talking point for why Shroom underperformed. Comes in stumbling into my room at 6.20 a.m. Uh, oh my god. Wakes me up. I cannot go back to bed for 45 minutes. <laughs> Getting bad sleep is kind of like not eating before a marathon, or lifting a ton of weights right before the strongman competition, or not vomiting before a basketball game. Jokes aside, the health stuff is really important. If you find yourself tapering off at tournaments and struggling to clutch out later sets, check your diet and sleep habits. And remember, if you build good sleeping and diet habits prior to the tournament, it's easier to carry them over into the tournament. Uh -oh, oh my God. So we've talked a ton about what you can do out of the game, but endurance isn't all external. There are ways to bring up your endurance that don't require doing very hard, very boring things like getting your life together. You can improve your endurance through practicing the game itself. But if we follow the idea that decisions are what fatigue us, we want to focus our practice on the decision-making aspects of Smash. That's right, it's time to get flashy and talk about building strong game plans and good neutral habits. <laughs> but seriously, things like combos and kill confirms are great, but mostly execution-based. Actually landing the combo starter or kill confirming move requires decision-making. Good opponents will often know what you're looking for and pick options to avoid it. So you've got to make a game plan that opens your opponent to your combos and kill confirms. That can be through conditioning, through reading defensive habits, or through baits. Whatever you do, it's going to take a lot of consecutive decision making. If you find yourself wanting to practice endurance in game, it is best to go into a friendly or practice session with the goal of repeating game plans and making them more habitual. You can practice conditioning with grabs to make opponents stop shielding, letting you land the opening hit. Or you could practice a tricky, intentional spacing that baits an opponent into out-of-shield options that won't actually hit, thus creating an opening. You can also practice decision-intensive moments in advantage and disadvantage, like ledge trapping and shielding. Ledge trapping is pretty much all about making the right decision, but you can make it less decision-intensive through game plans and reactions. Reactions in particular are super useful. Lots of characters have options that will punish rolls or normal getups on reaction. In Disadvantage, you have to think of ways of getting out of shield safely. You can make this part of the game less thought intensive by maximizing your out of shield options. How you maximize your out of shield options will vary based on your level. At the starting level of play, it's just about making a habit of your quick reliable options. It's making sure you drop shield and tilt less and up B and aerial out of shield more. Then, as you enter mid level, it's about realizing when you can and can't punish an attack on shield. For example, a mid-level player might punish the whiff's forward smash on shield with a weak but fast aerial. That fast aerial wasn't the best punish, it was the habitual punish. But gradually, you could fine-tune your habits and then respond with a smash attack of your own. At higher level, it's about combining all of what you learn and using quick options that kill confirm. At low percents, less risky punishes often net more percent and more reward than high-risk smash attacks anyways. To implement all of this, go into a practice match with less intention to win as hard as possible and more intention to optimize. Try to optimize game plans, ledge trap reactions, and out of shield habits. Then, when you're in a serious match, these decisions are more habitual and take less mental energy. There it is! Ladies and gentlemen! To wrap everything up, 
Remember that endurance is important, even in Smash. To improve your endurance, you can reduce the amount of decisions you make the day of the tournament. You can also get more sleep, eat better, and build better habits. Finally, you can also practice decision-making in-game by focusing on improving habits and game plans in friendlies. And of course, you can always go to ProGuides.com and get advice from a coach that's tailored to your specific situation and character. So check out the site if you haven't, and click the bell if you like this video, because there's more coming. <laughs> hey!